Elon receives some frustrating news concerning Starship. SpaceX throws down against the Biden regime. Falcon sets another personal best. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. In last Friday's episode, we discussed the finality of the FAA's investigation into the first Starship orbital launch attempt and how SpaceX has already met all their corrective demands, and so the FAA is working with the company for an optimistic green light sometime next month. Well, in standard bureaucratic forum, just minutes prior to the end of last week's work week, the agency sent out an email to those of us who opted in for correspondence back during the public comments portion of the Boca Chica programmatic environmental assessment, providing some details into what is still required for Starship to attempt its second launch. Quote, as part of that license application determination process, the FAA will review new environmental information, including changes related to the launch pad, as well as other proposed vehicle and flight modifications. The FAA will complete a written re-evaluation to the 2022 PEA, evaluating the new environmental information, including Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. If the FAA determines through the WR processes that the contents of the PEA do not remain valid in light of the changes proposed for Flight 2, additional environmental review will be required. And speaking of the Fish and Wildlife Service, they perturbed Elon this week when it was reported by Bloomberg that the governing agency hasn't even started its formal review of the upgrades at Starbase like the splash pad under the OLM, which could push the next launch date back by months since the process could take anywhere from 30 to 135 days. Elon commenting, that is unacceptable. It is absurd that SpaceX can build a giant rocket faster than they can shuffle paperwork. Well, that's government, brah. And to think there's people that wanna make it bigger. Keep in mind, as we just read from the FAA, this review is required before a written reevaluation to the 2022 PEA can happen, and SpaceX is granted a renewal to their launch license. And so, for reasons not entirely known yet, although I speculate it has something to do with the additional time SpaceX now has on its hands, Booster 9's vintage interstage was removed on Thursday. The company will probably have quite the backlog of rockets by the time 25.9 gets its chance to burn. Booster 10 went through its third round of cryo tests at Massey's this week and was moved back to the high bay for engine installation, only to have its place taken by Ship 29, which left for the test site last night. And test tank S26.1 was pushed to failure yesterday. So let's keep the deflating ball rolling with some more news of government intervention. Last month, I spoke about the Department of Justice's escalating proxy war on Elon and how they were now going after SpaceX for alleged discriminatory hiring practices for hiring Americans instead of foreigners. Well, this week it was reported that SpaceX is countersuing Biden's DOJ. In the suit, an attorney on their counsel wrote, quote, To the contrary, SpaceX wants to hire the very best candidates for every job regardless of their citizenship status, and in fact has hired hundreds of non-citizens, including those who are not U.S. persons under ITAR, I assume for positions not associated with regulated tech. On Friday night, Falcon 9 took 22 more Starlink satellites to LEO from Slick 40, Florida. SpaceX even showed us the pretty dope deployment of said sats. The booster for this mission flew for its fifth flight and came in hot for touchdown on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Then on Tuesday night, a record was set for reusability when Falcon launched another batch of 22 Starlink sats in orbit from the same pad. It was the 17th mission for the first stage, landing on a shortfall of gravitas bobbing on the Atlantic Ocean. Starlink's first community gateway is now providing gigabit connectivity up to 10 gigabits per second, shown here on the remote island of Unalaska. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Sunday, Stokes Space performed a development test flight of their reusable second stage rocket, dubbed Hopper 2, at Moses Lake, Washington. It launched to an altitude of 30 feet and landed at its pre-planned landing zone following 15 seconds of flight time. They wrote in an article on their website, quote, the test successfully demonstrated our novel hydrogen oxygen engine, regeneratively cooled heat shield, and differential throttle thrust vector control system, as well as our avionics software and ground systems. Well, that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for stopping by. Much love for my supporters who make these videos possible. And a nominal weekend to all. Until next time, Godspeed.